the greatest commandment of them all. Love. But which one? Love who? Okay. They love always God. love. Amen. Love God. Amen, evangelists over there. <laughs> According to Jesus, what is the best way to approach God and express our love to him? Do we do it with A, with confidence that God will answer our prayers? B, with confidence that we are saved by being Christians? C, with humble faith and trust like a child? Or D, with fear of God's wrath? Hmm. Best way to approach God. Man, there's a scripture say that we have to come to God with childlike faith. Anybody know that scripture? Amen. And you know why he said that? Because children are pure and innocent. Isn't that the truth? Amen. They are. They, they don't know nothing about hate or racism. Mm -hmm. They just as pure. They so sweet. I mean, they can be a little tough sometimes, but you know. <laughs> God bless. Okay, according to Jesus... Which of these is not a characteristic of those who truly love God? Which of these is not a characteristic of love, in other words? Humility, pride, obedience, or mercy? Pride. Amen. Pride. Because God can't stand a prideful look, right? I don't like when people are so bolsterous and got so much pride. Amen. They're big shots, you know. They know it all. We, we the big thing here. The top notch. Amen? Amen. God look at you like you the little notch. <laughs> you ain't nothing without God. So we got to learn to be humble at all times. Because even when Jesus Christ is here, he was humble. Yes. You know? That's one thing I thank God for. Um, when you think about Jesus, even he said a fox had the, uh, a hole to sleep in. Yes. He said, but the Son of God had no place to lay his head. Mm. Isn't that something? Amen. Look at that. But yet he was God. Yes. He rode a jackass instead of a big old colt. Amen. Look at that. Look at our God. He walked days and days. But yes. we can't do nothing without a, a drive. Can you drive me somewhere? I need a ride to the corner. <laughs> Amen. Mama, can you ride me to the corner? To the corner. <laughs> Praise but God. hey man, this is the this is the type of it's world that we're living in today. People are lazy. Amen? Amen. You want everything Amen. fast. Everything fast. Let's see. Um, all right, let me skip this one. Number five, true or false? Jesus said that anyone who simply acknowledges him as Lord and Savior will, will find favor with God. I'm going to read it again. This is a true or false. Jesus said that anyone who simply acknowledges him as Lord and Savior, we'll find favor with God. Amen. True or false? It is false. Um, it's a tricky one because you know why it's false? Because a lot of people say, oh, I believe God. Oh, I believe God. But they don't live for God. Yes. See, a lot of people say they acknowledge Him, but don't mean you find favor with Him. Amen. Woo! If you want favor with God, you got to do like Jesus say. I always do the things that pleases my father. Mm. How? By obeying him. Yes, we got so. to learn to obey the word of God. Amen. 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 Oh, God is good. Mm, I felt that. Praise, Praise his holy name. It says, fill in the blank. <laughs> it says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Tricked me at first. I thought peace, but now I think about it. Because <laughs> one of the answers here is it peace, eternal life, rest, or home in my father's mansion. <laughs> but it's rest. Amen, Amen, according to the scriptures. Okay, here go another true or false. Okay, God will love a sinner who repents, turns away from sin, and back to God. As much as he loves a person who has been faithful all of his or her life. So the Bible is saying that it's a true or false question. If a sinner repents and turns back to the Lord, it's saying, is it also true that God will love him like he loved a person who did not go out there 
Is that true or false? True. That's right. That's true. Amen. We think about the, um, the story in the Bible with the son that left, the prodigal son. Amen. 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 And even though he left and came back, God didn't, didn't treat him no less. Actually, he put the finest things on him. And you know, that's a lesson to be taught even with us, you know? In other words, none of us are uh, far from falling. Yes. Amen? We all have fallen once or twice, or more than that in our life. But God is trying to show us that we're still supposed to help a brother or sister back to Christ if we can. Amen. We don't just leave them out there. Yes. Some people look at you like you're dirt and they leave you out there. And this is what we talk about, a pride spirit again. See, yes. God don't deal with people like that. He has no room in his kingdom for people like that. We have to be humble. We have to be loved. We have to be forgiven. And we have to just trust God in all that we do. Amen? Amen. Let's see. True or false? Jesus taught that we must forgive those persons who have sinned against us, or else our own sins will not be forgiven by God. True. Amen. That's the Lord's prayer, right? Amen. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those, right? Yes. Forgive our debts, right? As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. Amen. And that's what we have to do, right? Amen. So that's what God expects us to do. Forgive. Forgive. It's an important word, y'all, forgiveness. It's not always an easy thing to do, but you got to realize that some of us that are saved today have done some damnable things. Some things that we would never let anybody else in this life know about. Amen. The only person to know about it is God. Amen? Yes. And he forgave us. Look at God. Yes. So who are we that we can't forgive one another? Amen? Amen. True or false? Jesus himself taught that he was a divine son of God. That's true. Amen? Amen. That's true. Which of these is not one of Jesus' teachings about wealth and money? This is a good one. A, you cannot serve God and money. D, do not enter to the temple to worship until all of your debts has been paid. C, do not store up treasures on earth where they may be destroyed and where thieves may steal. And D, see God's kingdom first and ye will and you will provide with a material things you need. And he will provide you with the material things you need. So the only thing that does not, was not a part of Jesus' teachings, was has nothing to do with wealth, was one thing. That you can't enter into God's temple. Amen. That there has something to do with, um, when you think of it, you have an ought against a brother or a sister. Then we shouldn't go to the altar until we go to that brother and sister and find out what's the problem, if we wrong or if we offended them, and apologize. Amen? Amen. And even sometime when you go to a brother and sister, and you might not have been wrong at all, but, you know, you still go and see, you know, what the problem is. And if they don't want to, you know, let it be, you did your part. And God is not going to hold you accountable when you say, I'm sorry. Amen? Amen. You have to know to do your part. See, we have to be the ones that forgive. We have to be the ones that forgive. We're not responsible for the person who might not want to reciprocate that back. Yes. That ain't our problem. Amen. Amen? Amen. But we have to forgive them and we have to mean it. Yes. Amen? And that's when God works with us. Amen. I'm going to do enough of that with questions. But um, tonight I was, um, earlier today I was studying um, one of the situations that a lot of saints deal with. A lot of Christian people deal with. And you know, I had to even check myself. Amen? Amen. And sometimes you have to be honest. You have to be honest. Um, attitudes. And I'm sure a lot of times some of us have attitudes. Amen? Amen. But you see, a lot of saints are going to tell you that ain't me. The devil is a lie. A lot of times we have attitudes. And sometimes we might not even realize we have an attitude. Yes. Isn't that something? Amen. Like I took my clients out. Um, Yesterday morning for President's breakfast, mm -hmm. and the waitress was on. The person, the hostess, was not very nice to me, you know. And even though I didn't respond in a bad way, I could have probably responded nicer. I said, you know what? I said you could be a little nicer, you know. But sometimes you don't have to say that. Amen. Sometimes it's better not to say nothing, you know. And I said, and God was showing me that, you know. Sometimes you just kill them with kindness. 
And that's a lot of times when we have a hard time at. When people give us an attitude, the first thing most people want to do is what? Snap at you. We want, right? We want to give them an attitude back, mm-hmm. right? Especially when you're being nice and sweet to somebody and they be all nasty. <laughs> you're like, okay. But anyway, I was looking at the word attitude. Now, attitude is a way of thinking, um, the way we look at things, or sometimes even the way that we look at each other and even perspectives. Now, perspective, I love that word perspective. Sometimes something is not the way we perceive it to be. And sometimes you might look a certain way. You ever find yourself staring off and people think you look at me, giving them an eye, or all yeah. mad at them? You be like, no, 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 I'm sorry. I was thinking about something. Sometimes your thought process have a certain look on your face <laughs> and other people might read it wrong. Yes. So then you immediately be like, oh, no, I'm so sorry. And we have to learn to do that. So sometimes, um, I remember um, Pastor Bible was saying, you got to be careful sometimes with your wandering mind. Amen. Yeah. Because sometimes that wandering mind have your face looking strange. <laughs> and people, <laughs> yeah, people don't know what you're thinking, you know. Yes. <laughs> and yes. it's the truth. So, you know, we ask God to give us strength to not be so much, you know, wandering. It's not good to have a wandering mind anyway. Because, you know, when your mind is wandering off of Christ, what's happening? The devil is really feeding into your brain, and we're listening to what he has to say. Amen. And then you have to catch yourself. That's why I say cast down imagination and pulling out strongholds. Amen? Yes, amen. So sometimes um, our attitudes can be um, displayed in our position. Sometimes the person's mad. We do different things with our body language, right? Yes. Amen. So we have to be careful even as Christians with that there. And I was um, looked at um, Job chapter 2 and verse 9 where Job's wife had an attitude. Mm. Now this woman had a bad attitude. She looked at her husband. He was full of pussy sores. He was sick. Oh, my God. He was just all messed up. And she was like, why don't you just curse God? Why don't you just curse God and die? Mm. Now, who would say that? And you know what the first thing he said to her? He didn't defend himself, but he wanted to know just how good God was. Amen. Why? Oh, hallelujah. Why would I curse a God like that? Yes. Whatever fell upon me got to be something I did. Because my God would not just do this to me. Yes. And God didn't. Thank you, Jesus. And that's the kind of faith y'all we got to have. You understand? Amen. Some things that we go through, they're not from God. It's just a part of the process to get us wherever God's trying to take us. Yes. Amen? Amen. See, Job went through something because God knew that he could carry him through. Isn't that something? Amen. Isn't that something? All of those people, God had to even tell the devil, had you considered my servant. Because Job was going up and down trying to see who he'd get. Yes. He said, hey, stop looking. Did you consider this guy here? Because he knew he was true and faithful. Yes. And a righteous man. Amen. And upright. Amen. That's what the Lord said. Now, you know what? Can God say that about any of us? Look at that. I'm like, Lord, I'm not Job. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jesus. Lord knew when he said only Job. Amen. <laughs> you understand? Amen. This man lost all of his kids in one day. Yes. All of his riches, everything he owned. And then his body broke out in all kinds of sores and boils. They were painful and oozing. But you know what? He never once cursed God. He said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Yes, Lord. Look at God. Amen. Oh, God, bless these people that were such troopers for the Lord. Isn't that something? Yes. My God, help us in the name of Jesus. And then I was talking about our tones. Again, you know, the Bible's been working on us with the attitudes, with forgiveness, with the tones. And we're taking these things every week, little by little, but we're going to get it right. And the tones, he's telling us, watch how we word things. He says, is your volume too high? In other words, are you yelling at the people? Anybody know what happened when Moses yelled at the people? Amen. What happened to Moses once he yelled at those people? Amen. You know what happened? He couldn't cross over. Yes. My, 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 my. He was still saved, 
He was still God's. God called him a friend. Amen. He was the only one got to see the hinds part of God, the backside. I told him to hide in the cliff, and I will show you the back part of me. Oh, look at God. But he still couldn't make it over. Yeah. Obedience, people, is better than a sacrifice. You got to obey that thing the way God said. God said, I didn't tell you to call those people out their name. I told you hit the rock and give them some water. Amen. I don't care how much murmuring and complaining they were doing. These are my people. My people. I'm their God. You just do what I say do. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we want to do what we want to do and not follow the rules of God. Yes. But God is the creator of all things. Yes, Lord. There's one God. Oh, bless his holy Hallelujah. name. And we got to do it the way he said do it. Amen. Even when we don't like it. Even when we don't understand it. Yes. It's still his way on the highway. And we know with the highway got a lot of details. We want to get on the highway. Mm -hmm. We want to stay on the right path. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. So God is teaching us that you... um. You can get your point across to the people without yelling and screaming. Use wisdom. Amen. And God is teaching me that. You know, because a lot of times we have unsaved members in our home. We got to go on our jobs. We're dealing with so many. We're dealing with the world yes. who is an enemy against God. Well, he said there's division in your house. You got to know how to be authoritative. But do it in the way Jesus Christ would want us to do it. Yes. Amen. Because at the same time, you got to remember that you're not dealing with flesh and blood. We're dealing with spiritual things. Yes. Wickedness in high places. We are dealing with demonic forces. And a lot of times the people we're dealing with, they don't even know that they're being used. Amen. They don't have no idea that there's a spell on them. Yes. Because the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Yes. Hallelujah. Isn't that something? Amen. Look at God. Oh, my God. And we were all in that place one day. But we loved darkness rather than light. We were all there. Yes. Some of us stayed out there too long. Amen. But God. Amen. But Amen. God. Could have died out there. But God. Amen. Bullets. Knives. Yes. Men. Yes. Women. Whatever the situation might be, but God. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, holy name. Thank you, Jesus. So again, we are going to be learning day by day how to hear the word of God and how to apply it in our life and learn to hear wisdom. Amen? Amen. Wisdom is a principal thing. You must get wisdom. Wisdom will teach you. She teaches you yes. if you just listen. Yes. She, she teaches hey, you. glory Hallelujah. to God. Amen. Lord. She will teach you. Amen. All you got to do is give it a ear yes. and have a willing mind. Hallelujah. And she will teach you everything you want to know about the goodness of the Lord. Lord. Woo, glory to God. Yes. Hey, hallelujah. And then I was thinking about Pastor, um, our continents. You know, your continents play a strong role. Yes. You know, you could either sit around people puffed up, coming to church all mad and angry, don't want to speak half the time, and we call ourselves saints. Don't you know God is not pleased with that? People coming to church, you puffed up and angry because you had a bad day. People coming to church, the Bible said, enter into his, what? His gates with thanksgiving to his courts with a praise. Yes. You're supposed to come in rejoicing. Amen. Somebody didn't make it. Somebody did not make it. Dad, wish they can get out of hell and tell you what it's like. If they could just have another chance. Mm, hallelujah. If they could just have another chance. But once you're there, the Bible says there is no repentance in hell. <coughs> That's what it says in the book of Psalms. There is no Repentance in hell. Mm -hmm. You might want to repent, but there's no repentance. There's no deliverance. There's no healing. There's no salvation in hell. Amen. That's why he said now. We're living in the now time. We can't put nothing off for tomorrow. Because tomorrow is not promised. Amen. Amen. We got to watch how we look. 
Watch our attitudes and watch our tones. Because we are supposed to be children of God. And Jesus did not act like that. And we're not supposed to act like that. Amen. Amen? So your continence. Sometimes we can look mad. We can look angry. And then uh, the word of God took me to the scripture with um, Abel and Cain. Genesis 4 and 3. Isn't that something? And it says, um, And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. See how God can respect some offerings? Because it depends on where you give it yeah. and how you give. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to give God your first fruit. In other words, your very best. If you get two apples, that real big red plump one, the prettiest one, give that to God. Amen. Amen. That's just like we talk about a tithe. He only asks for 10%. Give him what's due to him. Amen. That goes into the church. Not into everybody's pockets to buy jets and mansions and planes. It goes into the church that there may be meat in God, God's storehouse. Amen. You have people that come into church that might need something. This is what it's for. Yes. It's to help the ministry to build the church of God. Amen? Yes. That's what it's for. And then he says, But unto Cain and unto his offering, he had not no respect for it. And Cain became very wroth, and his countenance fell. So he became very wroth. Means he was mad, he was angry, he was puffed up, he had an attitude, his tone was off, his confidence, everything was off with Cain. And God looked at him and he said unto him, why art thou wroth? And why has thy confidence fallen? He said, if thou doest well, shall, not, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, he said, sin lies at the door. Now, I had to study this. I'm going to ask y'all this. Listen to this. Now, he said, if you do well, I would have accepted your, your gift. He said, if thou doest not well, he said, then sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So I was reading, I said, now, what are you saying here, Lord? He's saying, now, if thou do well, shall thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, he said, send life at the door. And then he said, and unto thee, and unto thee, so thee would have had to been Cain, and unto thee shall be his desire. And thou shalt rule over him. So I was like, Lord, what are you saying? I can't quite get this one. So I began to, you know, really look at it and ask God for guidance and researching. And then he gave it to me. He says, you must not let sin rule over you. Mm -hmm. So when something come to us, that's some good Bible study there. Amen. When something come to us, like it came to Cain, he had the authority because God give us all a conscience to choose right from wrong mm -hmm. from the beginning until now. He had the right to not let the sin rule him, but for him to rule over the sin. In other words, cast it down. Amen. Isn't that something? Yes. Because he was telling him, if you don't get this thing in control, it's at your door. Amen. And if you don't control it, it will control you. Yes. And he didn't listen. And you know what happened after that? He went and he slew his brother. He yes. killed his own brother because he would not put that sin under submission. And he had the power to do so. So my point to you is, the devil hates, and he is the sin. He makes you do some damnable things if you're not careful. He will make you rise up and kill your mother. He will make you rise up and kill your father. He yes. will make you rise up and kill your bosses because they laid you off. Get angry, get out to chase people with rose rage and, and, and shoot them down in the street. Amen. This last week a man chased somebody down and shot him. People are crazy today. And when that sin come in and you don't get rid of that sin, you've got a problem. Amen? Amen. Now, we know about the Holy Ghost and that you, you know, you need that to hold you and keep you. 
But God gives us even a choice to choose salvation, right? So yes. this is what this is saying. We have a choice. God is not going to put salvation on any of us. God is not going to make you serve him. Yes. God is not going to make you love him. Yes. You have to choose. Joshua said, choose you this day whom you are going to serve. You have to make the choice. Amen. You have to make the choice. Amen. The devil will always present things, but only we can take them. When Adam and Eve was in the Garden of Eden, amen? Amen. amen. He never once took that fruit and put it in her hand. Yes. Not once did he take it off a tree and put it in her hand. She willingly took that. She took it. She was deceived. Yes. And then she deceived, and then she gave it to her husband and he willingly ate because he didn't have to eat it. Yes. But he did it anyway. So they, they deliberately sinned against God. Amen? Amen? But again, it was a choice. We all have choices, y'all. Um, that's why when we're born, we have a conscience. You know, all everybody, everybody, even babies know right from wrong with something. They might not know how to put it where it belongs, but they know. Amen. You tell a little kid, um, did you steal those cookies out of the cookie jar? They're going to tell you, no, mama. Johnny, Johnny. <laughs> no, Papa. Eating cookies? No, Papa. Telling lies? No, Papa. Open one. Ah, ah, ah. There go all the cookies. <laughs> God is good. But we're just trying to show you a point that they know the lie about those cookies, right? Yeah. But they know it's wrong. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, Johnny, Johnny. That was a good one. But, uh,. <laughs> You got to know who is your master. Yes. We must not let the sin rule over us, but we must rule over it. We have a choice to do good or to do bad. And that is what God is trying to show us in this. So as saints, we're responsible for our attitudes. Um, a lot of times we do have situations going on outside of church, but we should not bring those problems into the church. You understand? We get frustrated. And people can, one thing about people, they can pick up the energy from the pulpit, yeah. from leadership, from anybody. You can pick up that energy, amen? Amen. Right? If I sit up here tonight and, and I'm forceful and people going to be like, oh, what's wrong with her? Yeah. You see it. Amen. So we have to watch ourselves. Sometimes we don't see us the way people see us. So you got to always use, that's where wisdom come in. You have to ask God, Lord, um, help me that I can see me the way people are seeing me. I want people to see me as um, holy, sanctified, Amen. and living a good life. I might not be perfect, and if they're looking for that perfect individual, they're not going to find it here. But I am somebody striving to do right. And I am somebody that's perfect or working to perfect myself in your love because we know love is the is the bond of perfection. Amen? Amen. Amen. So this is where we have to be perfect at according to the word of God. And when you love somebody, when you truly love somebody, then you know the love of God is in them. As we were talking about tonight, we were talking about love. And that's what God is. God is love. Amen? Amen. Yeah. God is love. And the Bible tells us that we say we love God. A lot of Christians have this problem. I don't like the word Christian. I like the word saints. Either you're a saint or you're not. Because only the saints are going to make it in. Amen? Amen. Amen? You got to be a child of God, an ambassador. You got to be Holy Ghost filled. You have to be saved. Amen? Amen. Um, people are preaching that you come as you are. God loves you just the way you are. No, God tells you if you're a sinner, repent and come to him. And then the Holy Ghost will straighten you out. But we have to get to the point where we are doing the right thing because we can become stumbling blocks to other people. We can't just live any old kind of way and think it's okay. Yes. Been sitting in the church over three years. I can see a person in the church, babe, still drinking milk. Paul talked about it. But then he told them, wait a minute, y'all been sucking on this bottle long enough. It's time for some meat. Yes. So we have to grow in Christ. You can't just stay one place. Yes. Because people are looking. They need to see where's God taking this at? Where are we going here? Amen. Are we still here? No, we need to start growing in God. Amen? Yes. Because after a while, when God don't see that you're not having any fruit on your tree, you're not growing, the Bible tells us he's going to hew that tree down. He's going to yes. take an axe and chop it down. Let me tell you something. When God chops that tree down, trees are righteousness. These are the same people. These are people of God. 
And when God chopped that tree down, you know what? From the root, it's no more growing back. Mm -hmm. Once the root is cut, it's dead. It means there's no more use for it. Amen? Amen. So we need to make sure that we're growing. Um, you didn't say giant steps. Some people take baby steps, but at least you're growing. Yes. <laughs> Just do something. Yes. You understand? In three years, you still shouldn't be smoking cigarettes. In three years, you still shouldn't be committing fornication. In three years, you still shouldn't be having adultery. Amen. In three years, you should not still be where you were three years ago. Yes. Drinking and getting high. Going to the clubs. In three years, these things should not be a part of your holy living. Yes. For the Bible says, be ye holy, for God is holy. Yes. And with, without it, no man, he don't care who you are, no man should enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. People need to know that. You need to know the truth. You cannot and you will not enter into the kingdom of God if you're full of sin. Yes. Not even full of sin if you have any sin. Because there ain't no sin going in heaven. The Bible says that we got to be spotless. Yes. Without a blemish. No wrinkles. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said we are sealed to the day of redemption. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank in you. other words, when God comes, he going to see you by the light that's shining in you. Yes. That light is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You must be born again. You must be baptized in the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. You must be washed in the blood. Creating us, oh God. Yes, creating Lord. us, oh God, a clean heart. And renew within us a right spirit. Yes. That we may not sin against thee. See, you got to have the God's heart. It has to create in you his clean heart. And this way here, you won't sin against him. You're going to do what God say do. And you're going to be obedient to his word. We have to learn to obey the word of God. We have to live holy. Yes. Without holiness, without holiness, some people hate to keep hearing it, but without holiness, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. You must be holy. You must be holy. You must be holy. I thank and praise God for all of you, and I thank and praise God for the Bible study on tonight. It's a little short, but we got to the points, Amen. and that's what matters. And you know, the Lord showed me today, and even in the live Bible study. And he asked me, the Spirit of God came to me when I was studying today, and he says, from now on, and I was gonna mention it to um, Pastor Bias and Lady Bias, when we do the live conference on Wednesday and on Friday, we need to ask if anybody in the line want to receive Christ, because we're live. Amen. And because we're dealing with people all over, we're getting people, like you say, from Tennessee, I know from North Carolina, Virginia, so sometime if there's anybody online that is not saved or anybody online that feel like they fell off some, I just want you to know that God is still God. And just like we mentioned earlier about the prodigal son, no matter what you did, God has forgiven you if you have forgiven yourself. All you need to remember to do is repent, repent, and repent. Ask God to clean you up. And come on and jump on the board because we in some perilous times. Amen. We're in the last days. and ain't no time for nobody to be falling off the boat. Y'all yes. better jump back in that boat. If you got to hold on to the anchor and let the boat fire. Yes. Hold Lord. on to that boat. Yes, Lord. Don't get out of the boat. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you got to hold on to the seal, hold on. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Just don't let go in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. In the name of Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory to God. So my point is anybody, anybody, you can always say, Lord, forgive me for I am a sinner. Oh, Lord, I have sinned. But Lord, I recognize that I'm the person with the attitude. I'm the person that's sometimes a little loud. I'm the person who continents, Lord, has been fallen. I've been hurt, oh God. But God can fix your hurt, for he's a healing God. He's a delivering God. Yes. He's a right now God. Yes. All you got to do is believe and receive. And my point to anybody that's watching, if you love God and you truly is tired of living just any old kind of way, ask God to forgive you and just say, Lord, I believe. That's all you have to say. 
Lord, I Lord, believe. Yes. Lord, I, I believe. believe, Lord. Hey, yeah, yeah. Ha. Hallelujah. Hey, say, my ha. I believe. Glory to Lord. God. Lord, Hallelujah. I believe. Thank you. Jesus. No matter the storms, I'm a hold yes. on, oh God. Yes. No Lord. matter the situation, Lord. I'm a hold on, God. Yes. No Lord. matter what comes, oh God. I'm a hold on, oh God. Hallelujah. I'm a hold on, oh God. Yes, Lord. Because I trust you and I need you. Yes, and I Lord. know you died for me. I Thank know you, you shed Lord. that blood for me. Thank you, Lord. Forgive me for all my sins Thank and you, save Lord. my soul. Amen. Amen. That's all it takes. Hallelujah. And then he comes in. Oh, the Holy Ghost feels good. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. Thank you, oh God. Lord, yes, we thank and praise you right now for everybody that's joined in and pray to God that some people's souls will touch on tonight. And I'm asking my pastor Bias, does he have anything that he wants to say on tonight? God's willing. If he has anything that he wants to add on to say tonight, I'm going to turn this portion over to my pastor. Amen. Welcome to Upon This Rock Ministry, my... Oh, God bless you. Amen. Oh, God bless you all. Um, thank God for a wonderful, for a wonderful world on tonight. You know, we yes, give God all the thank glory. You, Jesus. We give God all the honor. Um, um, thank God. Um, just, it's wonderful to hear um, such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful word from the Lord. Amen. It is a blessing uh, to learn, um, to, to, to know that we must change us. Yes. Know. Amen. You know, it's a, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to know that God forgives us. Yes. Hallelujah. And God is a forgiving God. Yes. That's one thing we got to always remember is that God forgives us. Yes. You know, so you never went too, you never went too far yet. Thank because you, Lord. You're, because you're still alive. Yes. I like that. And if you're still alive, you still got a chance. Yes. Look at that, amen. Because there's no chances in the grave. Nah. Jesus. There's no chances in hell. No, sir. In hell, there's no more chances. But as long as you're living, you still got a chance. Amen. As long as you're breathing, you still got a chance. Yes, sir. As soon as, as, long as God wake you up another day, you still got another chance to repent amen. and get it right with God. Amen. amen. And he give us the opportunity to get filled with his Holy Spirit. Yes. So that we may enter into his kingdom with him. Ooh, glory. That is a blessing. So Amen. we thank God for the blood. We thank God for thank the Father, you for the, blood. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, hallelujah. hallelujah. Which is one. Yes. We thank God for them. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. We'll forever give him all the glory and all the praises. Yes. Oh, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Thank glory, you, Jesus. Glory, glory. Wonderful. Amen. Good. See, that was real good. I would like to turn it over because you always might have someone to say it here. It was really good. Yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Amen. See, sometimes your audience is not always going to be here. 